Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Zwan Qureshi and today I'm going to do an exclusive Q&A session. These are the questions which have been commonly and repeatedly asked throughout the year 2022 and these are the questions which have been asked by doctors working or aspiring to work in the UK, doctor working, wanting to work in Australia, but the common theme is all about Australia. So firstly, let's just go through all of these questions one by one. So frequently asked questions from the doctors who are going to work in the UK or are working in the UK. Um, how is MRCEM, MRCP and MRCS going to help me getting a job in Australia? What about the recognition of MRCEM, MRCP, MRCS exams in Australia? Well, there's a good news and there's a bad news. Let's talk about the bad news first. The bad news is these exams are not directly recognized in lieu of any of the Australian exams. However, there is a plenty of good news. When you do complete, that is, exam, either MRCP, MRCS, or MRCEM, it shows your commitment. It shows your dedication towards a certain specialty. And it raises the bar of your credentials. So when you're applying for a training position in one of the regional centers or even one of the large city-based tertiary centers in Australia, you will be given a preference. And that is counted towards your postgraduate degree. Uh, in terms of your overall credentials. So even though they're not really directly helping you and you may have to do Australian fellowship exams, but these exams still help you in a number of different ways. Number one, getting a job. Number two, getting shortlisted for better training and teaching programs. These exams do carry a lot of credibility. Now the other question I get a lot, uh, asked a lot, I have done PLAB and have GMC registration. Can I work in Australia? Of course you can. But the common misconception is that uh, if you've done PLAB, now you get given a GMC registration. It is not going to be sufficient to have yourself a job in Australia. What actually gets you registered in Australia is 12 months of NHS experience. Now that can be a training experience or non-training experience, does not matter. But supervise clinical experience in NHS for 12 months is essential to get a seamless integration through competent authority pathway to work in Australia as a junior medical officer, which is anywhere from RMO to all the way up to the registrar. Number three, how do I start the process of getting a job in Australia from the UK? So I'll give you my example. When I was in the UK and I wanted to work here in Australia, I started to uh, hire one of the local companies and uh, I won't you know, recommend any of the local companies because different people may have different experience working with different companies. But when you get in touch with any of the local company, they will actually act on your behalf. The flip side is that they will provide you with placements in the hospital which are under-resourced, they're mostly regional or rural, and you may not get the true bargain uh, in, in terms of better training, in terms of... Uh, you know, the location of the hospital, city, whatever it is. You can apply to the hospitals directly. And uh, one of the ways, one of the several ways, in fact, of applying to the hospital directly is either go to the hospital website or regional uh, area website, for example, Mid North Coast, New South Wales, Southeastern Sydney, New South Wales, Victoria website, and there will be jobs advertised. And those jobs will give you specific criteria as to whether you're allowed to apply for a job or not. Once you've applied for a job, you'll get shortlisted, you'll get interviewed, and then the hospital will take over. And they will sponsor you, they will provide you with visa, and they will do all your paperwork. Now, the process can be a bit tedious, but the process is quite seamless. Once you've successfully done your interview, everything happens like a domino effect. So it's not that hard. My personal recommendation overall would be to apply the hospitals directly, starting off with the major regional and city centres, um, close to the major cities like Sydney, um, Melbourne, Perth, uh, not too far away. But obviously if you are too busy, then you can always contact local agencies and you can even give them your preference. Then I do get asked a question that uh, I have completed my specialist training in the UK in emergency medicine and how can I work as a consultant in Australia? Now, this is a very common question, and it's not just from emergency medicine. People in acute medicine, people in pediatrics, people in ICU have asked me that question. The answer to that question is that your UK training, like CCT, 
will be recognized, if not fully, then partially, based on how you've done your training and where you've done your training, how your assessor reports are. But you will have to spend a period of supervised medical training in Australia for the duration of six months to 12 months. Now that is for candidates who have completed the CCT uh, or uh, you know your specialist training pathway in the UK and have completed the FRCM exam, for example, if you're trying to become an emergency medicine consultant. Once you've done your training, done your full exam, then you can apply directly to the hospital um, via the college pathway and basically what you do is you apply as a specialist international medical graduate. Your training will be recognized either fully or partially. You'll be given a letter to do a period of supervised training in a hospital. You will not have to do exams if you have done FRCEM and then you'll be given a, a specialist recognition after a period of about 12 months and that will basically set you off for permanent residency and so forth. So it is possible but it just needs to be organized in a particular way. You have to apply to the college and then you have to apply for the hospital. First you have to apply for the hospital to have a job offer and then you have to apply for the college in terms of your recognition of the training time. And same goes for pediatrics, same goes for acute medicine and that is basically for the UK people because most of the exams, the fellowship or the full exams are recognized, not the membership exam, which is the main point that I draw distinction to earlier. Um, the other thing is that I get question is I cleared my English test, my house job, I've passed my pleb, so can you please guide me if along with all of these, um, should I do any postgraduate exams MRCP or should I just go forward with pleb or AMC while doing residency? So I think what the question, I've literally produced the question as it was asked and it's got certain you know, errors in terms of making a thief sense, but I think what the person or you know, the doctor wants to ask is that if, is it better to take the MRCEM, MRCP pathway to the GMC registration and then come to Australia, or is it better to do PLAB and AMC and then come to Australia? My personal advice would be always to go with the licensing exam. First of all, licensing exams are not that tough. Right now, it's not the time at a very basic level think about you know whether to uh, do the PLAB or AMC or which route should I take. It should always be a very focused point of getting out in a linear pathway. Stick to one exam, one system, one country, do that. When you've exhausted all the practical and training avenues, then switch job and country. Next question I get asked, my name is um, so and so, I'm currently working in the UK and my wife and I've just recently been offered a PGY3 job in Brisbane, Australia, in the same hospital. It seems like a really exciting opportunity, especially since in Australia is better in terms of work-life balance, finances and being able to bring parents at the same point. But I'm hopeful I might get into the UK training pathway this coming year. And I've heard it's really hard to get into the training into the medical and surgical specialties in Australia. I'm ready to take on a challenge, but my only concern is that if I may not stand a good chance because of the factors which I've already alluded to and which are beyond my control, such as my passport and me being an IMG from Pakistan, um, would I be able to get into training position in Australia? I watch your videos and follow your channel with great interest and you're the best person to guide me. So first of all, thank you for this question and I think this is a very good opportunity for you to reflect on yourself. If you have, again, invested yourself personally and professionally to be in the UK, and you think you've got a really good chance of joining a good training program in the UK, my advice would be to stay in the UK and complete that training program, rather than shipping, you know, jumping the ship and coming over to uh, Australia. That in the middle of your training or after starting the training. Now I know for a fact that the things in NHS are getting very difficult. Uh, NHS is hugely understaffed. Um, people are burning out, special doctors and IMGs are taken right for. So if you think that you want to come to Australia because of those reasons that I've just mentioned, then you know you can come here. In terms of your training, you've got as much as, as good possibility of training in any specialty in Australia as you would in, in the UK. In fact, it is the UK graduates who get preferentially um, given specialties in the, um, in the 
in Aust in Australia. Also, if you're an IMG from Pakistan, but you have completed a period uh, of training, you know, in the UK, then you can still come to Australia and join the training program after getting your permanent residency. Most of the colleges will be lenient and give you some sort of provisional training start time that look, even though you haven't got a permanent residency, your registration is not full, but we can give you the training and full training job after your permanent residency. That's especially true um, after the COVID, you know, every hospital is desperately seeking for doctors. Also, it's especially true because of the circumstances I've just said, if you've got an experience of a much similar system like in the UK, then in Australia they will they will sponsor everything, they'll get you here, they'll get you permanent residency. Permanent residency applications are now fast track. The point based migration system is much more easier and lenient now. So there are plenty of do goods here in Australia. Right now I'm not in Australia, I'm from Karachi as you can tell. Um, but this is the point which I, I'm trying to make that if you're again if you want to come to Australia, right now is the best time. You can get into any training program. You can get a permanent residency uh, based, obviously, on your personal and professional credentials. And then, you know, everything is possible. But if you think that you can get into a really good training program in a country where you're settled, you've got an experience of working in, then stay in that country. Now, um, I do get questions from subcontinent, especially India uh, and Sri Lanka and Bangladesh and Pakistan. And uh, I'll just quickly go through some of those questions. How do I start uh, the process of getting a job in Australia? And I think I've covered some of that already, that um, basically you have to do your English test at some point, but AMC part one. Now this is especially true for doctors who have done um, their house job. You must do your house job in your home country. I cannot emphasize that point enough. The doctors tend to really struggle who have not done their house job or internship. There are no internship positions in Australia. Please be very clear in your mind, no matter where you graduated. Now, lots of candidates have contacted me because they've graduated from China, from Spain, or from other countries where they haven't got an internship program. And they really um, end up being in very muddy and murky waters because there's no internship positions. The APRA will not get them a RMO position with an internship. So you must complete your intern position back home in your own country. After that, I would advise at least do another 12 months of residency in emergency medicine, acute medicine, pediatrics, or ICU. That will really open up the floodgates of opportunities for you here in Australia. And during that time, you should do your AMC1 and then apply for jobs whilst you're still in your home country. Do your interview and accept the job offers based on your personal preferences. Um, Again, the next question is, do I have to have a house job for Australia for AMC exam? Not for the exams, but you must do a house job in terms of getting a job. Because look, AMC 1 exam is very different exam from PLAB point of view, because based on AMC 1 exam only, you can apply for any uh, job here in Australia. You don't have to have an AMC 2. You don't have to pass an AMC 2, okay? You can go through WBA pathway. But it is still preferable to do AMC1 and AMC2 because it gives you full registration at the end of your 12 months of supervised clinical period. And uh, it's a good start. As I said, licensing exams are easier exam which opens up your communication skills, give you a lot of confidence while you're working on the floor. So licensing exams are really good. So finish up your house job, do a good solid 12 months of residency in emergency acute and intensive care medicine and then come to Australia just by doing AMC part one and you've got good chance. Also to add on, one more important thing is to do basic life support, advanced life support courses. They are cheap and cheerful back in your own home country. There should be no limitation in doing as number of many number of courses in recent six to 12 months period. Okay. The other question is that uh, uh, I have completed my training in radiology, surgery, gynecology, pediatric training. Now I've actually summarized quite a few questions. So basically what they are trying to say that I have completed my training in back home in my own country, in emergency medicine, in trauma, in radiology, in surgery, in gynecology. How can I start to work as a consultant? Again, this is one of the ways where you have to apply to the college uh, that you're associated with, the College of Emergency Medicine, College of Physicians, College of Surgeons, and have your training recognized. Now, people coming from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka will have partial recognition. 
I haven't seen someone who's had full recognition of their 48 months of period of time spent. You would still have to do the Australian fellowship exam. Now this is for uh, the people who are in um, you know, third world countries. You still have to do the fellowship exam. So be very clear in your mind, you can have your training recognized. I know personally a radiologist and an orthopedic surgeon and also a gynecologist. Gynecologists who have trained exclusively in Aachan Hospital in Karachi. Um, an orthopedic surgeon who trained in Mayo Hospital and radiologist also who trained at Mayo Hospital. They had whole of their, a partial of their uh, training recognized. They only had to do a period of supervised 12 months of training additionally on top of that. The radiologist didn't even have to do that. Then they did the fellowship exam and now they're all working as a consultant here in Australia. The other thing is that, uh, but as I said, that this process requires you to be very smart. It's a very expensive pathway. You have to apply to the college. It's a particular application process. It's an interview process. They will give you a recognition time and then they'll ask you to sit for an exam, which is a fellowship exam. So be more smart. We can provide you with guidance in terms of that specialist pathway recognition, which is also known as SIAMG, Specialist International Medical Graduate Pathway in terms of recognition. But you have to be very smart in terms of your wording, in terms of creating a parallel to the Australian health system. Um, now, this question is that, um, uh, I am FCPS dermatologist working as a senior registrar in Pakistan. Can you guide me if I can work as a consultant level in Australia? Now, this is a very important question because there are many dermatologists who have contacted me. Dermatology is a very competitive field. And the College of Dermatology is completely different to the College of uh, Physicians. So you have to apply for this, um, uh, to the College of Dermatology separately. Again, in terms of your training time, in terms of your examination. You must be working as a consultant. And that too holds with the other specialty as well. You must be working as a consultant in India, in Pakistan, in um, Sri Lanka to be accepted via the SIMG pathway, that is Specialist International Medical Graduate Pathway. I know one doctor who was working as a cardiologist in India, having done MD, and he was recognized, his training time was fully recognized and he got entry into uh, work as a cardiologist. So this is a very good pathway for the doctors who are fully trained, they're working as a consultant for at least at least 12 months. You've got a very good pathway ahead of you. It cuts off a lot of training time. In some cases, if your exams uh, show an amalgamation of some of the UK exams, you may not even have to do exam. But don't quote me for that, apply to the college and they'll give you a complete new pathway. So it's called SIMG pathway. Um, so dermatology is said, apply to the dermatology, uh, dermatology path, uh, college and the pathway is going to be different. Now my husband passed AMC 1 in 2016 but failed AMC 2 after uh, by just one station. He has a clinical gap of 8 years. Now he's gone back to Bangladesh to complete his recency and he's come back. How can I improve my chances to join the medical workforce here in Australia? He's got a gap of about 8 years. Now recently. I cannot tell you how many doctors have been able to get a job in Australia with huge career gaps, eight years, nine years. This is a very good time. And I think 2023 may be one of the last years where these opportunities might be you know, reducing for 2024, 2025, who knows. But if you are back home in your own country fulfilling your recency requirements, do them in specialties which count as specialties in demands like emergency medicine, acute medicine, intensive care medicine. These are hot specialties. Number two, do courses. Advanced trauma life support, invest in those courses. They will save you a lot of time and effort when you come to Australia. Advanced cardiac life support courses, advanced pediatric life support courses, any sort of communication and procedural skill courses, ultrasound courses, all of these things make a huge difference. And they're much cheaper when you're in your own country. When you come on shore to Australia, do some more courses to, to learn the system, like an orientation course, a bridging course, or AMC course. That will show your commitment, and it will make your pathway easy. But you must understand that the doctors who have been able to get a job have been able to get a job just with recency. So fulfilling your recency requirement in a good hospital, in emergency medicine, in intensive care, in acute medicine, plus doing the courses, are good enough credentials to at least start getting shortlisted. 
the way to apply for a job shortlisting application forms and interview it's a completely different topic which I'm not going to go into a detail of but at least start getting the process of getting shortlisted the last thing is that uh, uh, you know, I've just cleared my FCPS in cardiology and re lately got married uh, and I'll be moving to Australia. Is there any way I could get my specialty recognized in Australia? Same goes. If you've done your FCPS, complete training in a good recognized tertiary teaching hospital, apply to the College of Physicians directly. They will, first of all, accredit your training time. They will partially or fully accredit based on your circumstances and they'll give you a certificate that this much time has been recognized. Number two, you may still have to do an exam, but don't quote me for that. Examination requirement depends on multiple different factors. And then they will give you a final certification that this much time and these exams are recognized. Sometimes, you know, the written's get um, recognized and you don't, you don't only have to do the viva component of it. Um, in Australia, there's no exit cardiology, exit pulmonology, exit respiratory endocrinology, or uh, any other exam. It's only, in the medical specialty, it's only one exam which is called Fellow of Royal College of Physicians. So the, the circumstances are quite different. Now these are only some of the questions and I hope it clears some of the doubts in your mind. I may have to, you know, if you've got any more questions, I may have to do another session, but please drop your questions in the comment section. Uh, I am in Karachi, I'm more than happy to answer all of these questions, either in person or online or through email. My address is info at emergencyfocus.net or you can visit our website, www.emergencyfocus.net. Plus, just a quick announcement, we are starting our AMC clinical course shortly, so please do join the courses. We are nearly 70% booked out in evening and 50% booked out in morning classes, and orientation courses are all online, so you can join them as soon as you can. Thank you very much. Take good care of yourself.